career for women, professional baseball. It's the Bluebirds and the Bloomer Girls. These professional women baseball, not softball players, look like secretaries or stenographers or just good-looking wholesome girls. Women's baseball is big business and getting bigger and bigger all the time. There are leagues in Florida and California, and last summer eight clubs in the Midwest played before over 750,000 spectators. But here come the players, dressed for the diamond, with bats, gloves, sweaters, and chic shorts, even sliding step-ins. And the crowd cheers. Professional women players come to the Midwest from all over the country and Canada. Many are still in their teens, but they earn up to $125 a week. Crowds average thousands, mostly family groups they usually fill the park. Here to watch their rivals play are Pat Carson, leading home run hitter, and Loretta Davis, another terror at bat. Although these girls are thoroughly feminine, they play aggressive baseball and get hurt, too, like Bloomer Girls strikeout queen Wilda Mae Turner with a twisted ankle. And here's one of the Bluebirds' outstanding pitchers, Margaret Berger. <laughs> Looks like she needs some tape, too. Lonnie Stark and Kay Rohrer are tonight's Bluebird battery. One of the league's standout pitchers, Lonnie's got a fast-breaking curve and a back-breaking slow ball. Kay Rohrer switched her evening gowns for, well, I guess you'd call it a chest protector <laughs> and a catcher's mask. Like their big league brothers, these girls have their batting practice to sharpen their hitting. Oh, yes, the pitcher is Gwen Wong, a Chinese girl from San Francisco. And believe me, these gals sure do pack a lusty wallop. And now the Bluebirds are lined up, ready to go out on the playing field. Stark, pitcher, Rohrer, catcher, Eckholm, first base, Lorenz, second base, Berger, catcher, O'Connor, center field, Krigler, third base, Garber, right field, Elworthy, catcher, Mochinski, catcher, Marianne, pitcher, Morlock, second base, Shinen, shortstop, Sadowski, outfield, Elliott, pitcher, and Hain, left field. And the Bloomer girls are all set to go, too. Here's Stewart, center field, Vaughn, pitcher, Kromchik, left field, Perry, outfield, Palo, catcher, Fample, pitcher, Crawley, right field, Huser, third base, McCaig, catcher, Clois, first base, Wine, shortstop, Cato, second base, E.B., first base, and Wong, pitcher. The umpire shouts, play ball! Tonight's game is going to be a pitcher's battle between a blonde and a brunette. The first pitch, and it's a wallop to shortstop who throws her out at first. And the ball goes around the infield. Another drive to the shortstop, and with a strong win, she might have beat it out to first. No run. Here's the Bloomer girls taking their turn on the field. One swallow doesn't necessarily make a summer, but these bluebirds will tell you that a pitch where you can't hit it makes a side that's out. Here's the pitch. She takes a strike, called, expecting to get a walk. It's a good swing, but she strikes out. There's a long fly to right field where it's taken for an out. Uh-oh, she walked the pitcher, which makes it even for a walk she gave a bloomer girl earlier. A hefty swing, but only a foul strike and she walks O'Connor. A few words of encouragement from the catcher, and it works. The next batter takes a call third strike. It's the lucky seventh. Maybe we can get a run or two. What's this? No one in the batter's box. What goes on 
here. Oh, yes, an argument with the umpire. Of course, the coach says, you can't do that to us. I think it's going to be settled by a wave of a bat. It is. She smashes one to left field for an out. They still have plenty of pep as they toss the ball around. The pitch, it's a strike swinging. She grounds out, pitcher to first. They're really peppy. The pitch, ball one. And she smacks it down the third baseline and she's out, third to first. No runs. Last of the seventh and time for the seventh inning stretch and a cheer. Next batter, and she pops out to first. She swings, and it's a foul. He goes down swinging. Still no score. A slight difference of opinion between innings. She smacks one to shortstop, and she's out, short to first. Second half of the tenth rolls around, and still it's no score. A roller which the first baseman couldn't flag in time to tag her out. Ball one. An attempted bunt, but she's out at first. There's a long high one to left field, and just watch that left fielder take it. There's another one to that left field fly catcher. Enough said. Still no score. Takes plenty of youth and stamina to go ten innings without a score. The pitch, and it's a single whistling into left field. Wine smashes one into a forced play at second. Safe on first. The pitch, and it's a ball. Another pitch, and she nicks it for a foul. McCaig bangs one into right field, but Garber takes it for the out. The pitch, and it nicks her slide-ins. Another ball, there goes Dorothy Wine for second. Dorothy, you could have avoided that by staying on first. Still no runs. Hain is nice enough to submit to a strikeout treatment. There's a single to left field, and the crowd likes it. These bluebirds are real mischief makers once they start hitting. There's another single to left field. Runner safe on first and second. It's a powwow. A fly to left field and she's out. Runners hold their bases. Strike one called and it gets away from the catcher while runners advance to second and third. The girls look worried for the bases are loaded and anything can happen. And it does. Morlock drives one to the left field fence, driving in the winning runs. Francis, that was not only your downfall, but the downfall of the Bloomer girls, too. Not only is women's baseball a lucrative profession, but it's a great sport and a splendid career for young girls who like competitive sports. They play six nights a week, usually from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., and it's good, clean, wholesome fun, even though you may be on the losing team. Better luck next time, Bloomer Girls.